Hi, this is Not Too Fast here. Now this is part two of the brake installation on this Honda Odyssey. In the last video, I showed you how to replace the front and rear brake pad and rotor. In this video, I will show you how to bleed the brake fluid on each caliper. So stay tuned. For this job, I'll be using this Harbor Freight brake fluid bleeder. Besides picking this up at Harbor Freight, you can also get it on Amazon. As you can see, there's a container here. This is a 34 ounce container that holds your old fluid. There's a handle here. When you pull the trigger, it will allow the vacuum to activate and suck up the old fluid using this hose right here. There are no adjustments you need to do. Right now, I'm gonna connect my compressor to this device. And when I pull the trigger, you can hear the vacuum. I'm going to first use this to vacuum out the old fluid in the brake reservoir. I'm going to remove the hose from this adapter here. Remove the screen. Then we can take out more of the fluid. Next, I'm going to top it off with a new brake fluid. I'll be using this Pre-Stone Dot 3 Full Synthetic Brake Fluid. One very important note, as we bleed each caliper, make sure this reservoir is not empty. So you always have to check this to make sure new fluid is topped off. Now the order for which you need to bleed each caliper on this Honda is starting with the front left wheel, then over to the front right side, then followed by the rear right. The last one is rear left. Now this sequence might be very different than what some of you have been told in the past, which is to bleed the caliper furthest from the master cylinder and then work your way towards the closest one. But depending on which vehicle you have, that sequence might be different. So the best thing is to refer to your car service manual or research that information on the internet. Here's a front driver's side caliper. Remove the rubber cap on the bleeder screw. Now if you want a better seal between the bleeder screw and the rubber bleeder adapter, you can put some grease like Sil Glide around the bleeder screw. Put a 10 millimeter wrench on the bleeder screw and then place the rubber bleeder adapter onto the bleeder screw. When you're ready to vacuum the fluid, you want to pull on the trigger and then loosen the bleeder screw. and you want to suck all the old fluid out and also check the reservoir to make sure it's not empty. I just topped off the brake reservoir. Let's continue vacuuming the old fluid out. So do this a couple of times until the fluid coming out is clear. As you can see, the old fluid is already in this container. Okay, we'll move on to the next caliper. Reinstall the rubber cover. So for the first wheel, this is how much fluid I've taken out. And let me show you the reservoir. I've topped it off a couple of times. As you can see, the fluid is nice and clean now. It's not that dark brown color with the old fluid. So we know all the old fluid has been vacuumed out through the system. Now onto the front right side. Okay, this side is done. The third caliper I'm bleeding is going to be the rear right side.
Okay, this one is done now. On to the last one. This is the left rear wheel or the driver's side rear wheel. Okay, this last one is done. I got about 20 fluid ounce of uh, brake fluid in this container and that's for the entire system. Now we'll get into the car, start it up and pump the brake until it's nice and firm. After about seven pumps, I can feel it, it's nice and firm now. Shut off the engine. You should notice the fluid level has gone down. Go ahead and top it off until you reach the max line. After doing the bleeding procedure, you can see the fluid is nice and clear now. Once you've topped off the brake fluid in the reservoir, go ahead and put this screen back in. And then put the cover back on. And here's a look at the old fluid. As you can see, it's very dark, very dirty. And with this new container of 32 fluid ounce brake fluid, I used probably over half the bottle. Here's another look at the old fluid after I transferred it to this clear container. Before you lower the car all the way down, tighten the lug nuts to 94 foot-pounds. The last thing you'll need to do is take the car out for a test drive now do not drive on a highway. You want to find a small street where there are no traffic and do a couple of stops to make sure the brakes are working. After you come back from the test drive, double check the lug nuts, make sure they're tight and also double check the fluid level in the brake reservoir. Make sure the fluid is at the maximum level. If you look at the user guide on the first page here, under the specifications, it tells you that the operating PSI is 90 to 120 PSI. However, it does not give you any specification for the CFM that's required to operate this device. And what the CFM is, is cubic feet per minute. And that tells you the rate of airflow this tool requires to operate properly. It's important to know that your compressor also has a CFM rating that will tell you what kind of tools it can operate. So let me show you the compressor I'm using in my garage to operate this bleeder tool. Now, this compressor you're looking at is a DeWalt model number D55168. The tank is a 15 gallon tank. And let me bring the camera to the top of the compressor and it actually has the specs listed for this compressor. The tank has a maximum of 200 PSI. The motor is 1.8 horsepower and as you can see it's a 15 gallon tank and the top right hand corner number is 5.4 SCFM at 90 PSI now the SCFM is more of a standardized measurement because when you compare that to the CFM the CFM measurement does not take into consideration any of the atmospheric pressure air temperature or humidity however if your compressor only has a CFM measurement it's still a good guide to let you know what the performance is on that compressor well, I hope you enjoy watching these two videos on how to replace the brake pad and rotor and do a complete brake bleed of the old fluid out of the system and replace it with new fluid. Now, for all the parts and tools that I use in this video, I will include it in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, leave one in the comment section. 
And don't forget to click on thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.